well, first of all, thank you for accepting our invitation. No and, problem. Really. And I know that this is the first yeah, case that... It's quite challenging, so... <laughs> challenging. Well, what part is challenging? I mean, you don't like to speak in front of crowd or... Or you didn't try uh, so far? Maybe something from everything. <laughs> yeah. It's so just everything is new. Mm -hmm. So... Well, when did you start your channel? I... Uh, it is... Four years ago. This is four years ago. Uh -huh. I was at the high school, and I don't work. I didn't, I didn't have much work, a lot of work at high school. So I just. <laughs> and uh, what about the modeling itself? So. I guess you started like a oh, lot more years. Yes, in the childhood. <laughs> I started with paper crafts, with paper models, because uh, flumes for colors is not very helpful for kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and glue. So I started with paper, paper crafts. Mm -hmm. But in 15 years, when I, so I started with plastic models because my brother uh, making plastic models and my brother do, do, did a lot of plastic models and I destroyed them. <laughs> There's always somebody to blame when it's about plastic <laughs> models. So yeah. I have some references. Mm -hmm. But generally how it used to look like is just the same story as mine that uh, I got a plastic model at the age of I don't know, 8, 10, something like that, uh, from my father. And then I kept on building like three, four, five models. And, uh, and, and <laughs> this is one of the hardest language in the world. <laughs> yeah. I know. So we should learn Chinese and then we have the, <laughs> the two hardest ever. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, actually, so I, I got a model from my father when I was at the age of 10. I built it, I've built five, six more, and then uh, 10 years out. You know, high school and the first girlfriends and everything, and it, it just disappeared from my life. And then I restarted like, I don't know, three, four, five years ago. You know, when you have the wife and the kids and everything, then you start again to have some. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> And uh, yeah, but but uh, you you know. So, what what is the difference between you and uh, any other uh, modeler who is making a video blog? So, what is the difference? What makes you so uh, popular, famous? Because uh, whoever I tell your name knows who who you are. So we all learn from from your videos. We all watch what you are doing. So. You know you, what is the what is the secret? What is the magic? I really don't know. I think that I'm still not famous and sometimes a little bit invisible. But uh, I know that I have uh, one one hundred thousand subscribers or something like that. I don't count really because uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming for for me. So I mostly. Just making models because it's a fun. I started my channel because I wanted making models mm -hmm. because I, I first I started with my uh, blog or website mm -hmm. where I publish photos and articles. And after some time, I thought it's a little bit boring because people asking me about different techniques and how, how I really do it, and they do not know it because uh, mostly from the pictures you don't you don't learn the technique. So, my mother bought me on the, at the Christmas or oh, Santa Claus mm -hmm. or, <laughs> or something else, uh, uh, bought me video camera and I start uh, making videos and showing people how to make uh, some technique on video and directly show the precise how to do it. So, it, it, it was more interactive than pictures and articles. Mm -hmm. And it was quite fun, and I have uh, 100 views, and I was super happy. <laughs> and I just started making more videos, and just came came self to me everything. 
Yes. So whenever you make a video, uh, you are not afraid that 100,000 modelers uh, will uh, watch that video. But now you are afraid that 200 people will watch your show live. <laughs> yeah? Because I am on, uh, outside camera or in front camera and I do not see the people. Mm -hmm. I see only numbers and I prepare everything uh, uh, before I say everything. So I write article mm -hmm. and then I say everything in the video and I can cut it and say it again. So it is more, more comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and make live, live uh, workshop and explain techniques in live for people. Uh -huh. And uh, actually what I saw in your videos that you are doing, preparing, making, building nearly everything. So uh, yeah, uh, do you have something like a, a favorite topic or? No, uh, I found out that uh, making only planes or focus on or any AFV tanks, ships, uh, it is m not uh, very comfortable or very, um, how, to, how to say it, uh, yes, uh, I, you can say it like that, uh, because you can learn from every spectrum something new, mm -hmm. for example, if you're building only planes, you will uh, learn how to make uh, clean models, how to make a uh, party, uh, restoring panel lines, everything, and a lot of it, interesting stuff. But mm -hmm. from AFV tanks, uh, you can learn heavy weathering, mud, a lot of interesting techniques. And it's again from cars and motor, motors, bo uh, motor bicycles. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can learn how to make a polish, uh, polish surface and a lot of other different techniques. For example, I started with uh, RC models mm -hmm. and again it brings me a lot of uh, different knowledge uh, how to <laughs> bring something to other models. Mm -hmm. So I can make a weathering from AV to planes and other stuff and combine everything together. Mm -hmm. So for example, like uh, last uh, Star Destroyer from mm -hmm. Star Wars, I learn how to make electronic stuff from RC models. Mm -hmm. So it's everything to combine with uh, different spectrums of uh, models. It's only interesting because making only, for, for example, I know modelers which building model only, for example, one type. So the, the favorite plane is Spitfire, so building only Spitfires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I do not even imagine how to build only one plane, one type of plane. So it's for me a little bit, I want to say boring, but okay, I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Actually, the same story with me because my main focus is, uh, you know, everything that is Hungarian and 70 second scale. Now, I just browse the pictures on the internet or a Facebook page or something, and I see something, an Aggressor F-18, and okay, I just bought an F-18, which we, uh, the Hungarians never had, but I have to build it. So now, despite of having this uh, idea of making Hungarian related models, most of my models are not related to this, so, so I fully understand what you're saying. And do you have somebody who is uh, uh, your for example, favorite modeler or, or somebody who you are paying special attention to? Or I think that all modelers can bring some knowledge to others. So uh, if you will look at the Facebook pages, you can see thousands of uh, very talented modelers and you can learn from everyone something mm -hmm. so I can I can tell that we're inspired uh, we're inspiring is uh, Mick Jimas from me uh, I can learn a lot of I learned a lot of techniques on AFV models from him mm -hmm. but from Czech Republic uh, for example planes uh, Mudras Daniel Shebesta, it's a very famous in Czech Republic. Once again, and slower, please. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I know what you're talking about, but uh, it's, uh, it's uh, my, my idea is that uh, 
everybody can learn from others and that's a good thing and uh, in the 21st century that we have the internet and we have everything it's uh, it's really good to share uh, what you experience for example in yes. weathering or something but uh, what makes you a, a really unique and uh, top-notch modeler is uh, the point when you have your own style there is something that uh, you, you, you learn from, from the techniques and, and you, you, you just mix a little of yourself into that. Yes. And, and you have that, you, you have yes, that little extra. I know, but extra. you will mostly find it after many years of mod plastic modeling. I do not highly recommend to find own, own way or for beginners. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, making models two years and you mostly you must find your way and other stuff. I don't think that it is very good for beginners because I highly recommend just look at the models for professionals and just trying different techniques and find a way this way. Because uh, trying to just making uh, for five, five on way on only by by your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, not very, very comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. And uh, uh, do you know if uh, in the Czech Republic there is something like a um, uh, Czech school? Uh, yeah, a school for modelers or like an on online courses or something like that. Uh, I know a few DVDs uh, which has something similar what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think that some online courses. So and offline courses. Offline courses, yes. We have workshops and model competitions. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not very familiar with modeling uh, community in Czech Republic uh -huh. <laughs> because I mostly do not come to competition. <laughs> that was my next question. Uh, it's actually. Okay. <laughs> That uh, so so it's not really common that you go to competitions even in Czech Republic, uh, yes, yeah. Yes. Uh, it takes a lot of time, and for me, in childhood, okay, I was a little bit comp competition person, mm -hmm. but I think it is not quite fair for me to uh, go to some uh, competition and do the model and win a prize because I'm uh, in a half a professional modeler. So, I think it's not fair just to compare my skills with uh, people which have regular work and just doing it at the night. <laughs> so, and what about judging? You are not invited for uh, for judging models, uh, for example, to competitions? Or? Yes, we have a local competition uh, in Czech Republic, in small villages and like that. Mm -hmm. I have friends where uh, we have modeling club in Frank mm -hmm. this is my my town, which I bought. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we competed model here, and I'm doing a, lot, a few years. Just every year, I just go there and just make it fun and just talk with people and <laughs> about new stuff, and drink a little, a little bit. <laughs> so, but I've never competed. Be judge on large competition like something like your competition. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Or, or the like model per hour on eBay or something. There will be one uh, category where you will be judging together with Ruben Gonzalez. So just get prepared yourself for that. Okay. Yeah. So you will help me. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I don't know what uh, his what is his experience with, uh, with judging. Uh, I guess he's now busy with the uh, AK's uh, marketing and demos and... Yes, it must, it must be very time consuming. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Google like he did, I can imagine. Yeah. Make tons of photos and must be... I must ask him. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, that, that, that's a different story. I really don't, don't know how can someone make a, a modeling for a living. So... I just don't know what, what's the... Well, of course I could imagine that I don't have to go to work and uh, just sit home and 
do my models and then somebody's paying for that but uh, <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's not the story yet but, but after some time it can be a little bit boring <laughs> just making only models no the, the worst part could be that somebody's telling me what to build <laughs> and that's the worst part yeah so uh, for example company brings out a new model and then okay Mickey here is the model build it and you know I'm just like it's, it's not my topic it's not something that I I like and uh, ah, I don't know you can disagree <laughs> yeah yeah but I, then I don't get the salary yeah so uh, and I don't remember have you been to Budapest before yes I have been here two years ago uh -huh. with my brother just on the weekend uh -huh. visiting uh, thermal uh -huh. Baths? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... You are a fan of thermal baths? I'm... I was in the summer, so... It was uh, quite hot <laughs> outside, so in the hot water it was... <laughs> it was nice, but... Uh, but it was very interesting knowledge. And <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but you have uh, seen the mandatory items, the... Parliament, fishermen's bastion, this. I rather uh, like to go to mountains, <laughs> like mm -hmm. Alps. And I don't have mountains here for you, sorry. <laughs> no we have a lot of <laughs> small hills, but nothing more. Yeah, I know that you are a serious biker and runner, and hiking is one of your favorite yes, activities. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's really near to you as well. But how do you find time for all of this you said you are a movie lover as well you build models as well yeah the man finds time yeah whatever for whatever he wants yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> sure sure is beer in hungarian <laughs> okay. okay good to know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tak budíš doma, ne? Co? Tyhle za mnou. Now the complete city is chaos because they are building the roads everywhere, and uh, it's always like this in the summer. In Prague, it is no better. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, Prague is totally traffic jam. <laughs> It is every day. <laughs> it's a standard. No, I, I, I really hate this. I really hate Therefore, this. I don't have a car. <laughs> uh -huh. And the bicycle is everything much faster. <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, you know, I uh, I live in the suburbs, so not in Budapest. I work at the airport, which is also the suburbs. <laughs> so. For me, with the car, it's 10 minutes drive, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I avoid the city totally. But uh, my first 20 years of my life, I was living in Budapest, and uh, I couldn't imagine living here again because I just couldn't stand that. You cannot drive here because it's traffic jam everywhere. You cannot park anywhere, so it's just. Oh. Just so my friends saying me that how how is possible to not have a car? Just I'm saying. I am happy and glad, but I do not have a car. <laughs> I can afford it, do not have a car. <laughs> yes, it's time to shut this up. Now well, let's be for Fatlon. Better than care. You see, you see. Uh oh, I want to go far. What is your next project? I'm working at Henkel 9019. <laughs> this is a two engine uh, Nidegger bomber. Mm -hmm. So which scale? 148. 48. So it's a quite big. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit scared again about my camouflage pattern. It has 
very difficult camo scheme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like the well, base is covered with uh, dark grey, mm -hmm. and and then is painted with uh, snakes. Uh -huh, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, with light grey. So I wouldn't think that you should be afraid of anything that uh -huh. is modeling. I remember that. I'm always there. <laughs> I remember that when you started to build the 737 300, yeah, but you bought the 400 and you cut the part out to assemble yes, it again. Yes, because um, I say I have modeling club in Freak Mistakes, so I have a friend and we have a small local shop here. Mm -hmm. and, and this was available, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, you give me for free decals with Simpsons theme. Uh -huh. So I was extremely exciting about them, and but I don't have a kit for it. <laughs> so I searching about precise kit for a 737, mm -hmm. 300, mm -hmm. but I didn't find it in USA. But it was quite expensive. So I found in local auction uh, 737, 500, and I just uh, look at the Google. Google, uh -huh. what is the difference? Yeah. This difference, and then vice pan is almost same, mm -hmm. height is same, just uh, fuselage is a little bit larger. So I thought yeah, it, it, was it, it wasn't so difficult. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. That was my very first question to you on the internet. That why don't you just buy the 300? <laughs> because that wouldn't be you. I mean, for the, the same story with the uh, with the photo etch. You, you do it yourself. You just go to your chemistry shop and and you do your fo uh, photo etch things. Yes, yourself. I always wanted to make some of my own photo etch parts. I'm always looking for new techniques because I'm always trying to find a new interesting uh, how to do something. So, for example, casting or making uh, photo etch parts, and that is fun. Or about all about modeling so mm -hmm. you never <laughs> you never stop you learning never, yeah. Yeah, never can stop learning and you always found something good you can learn so mm -hmm. this is very exciting oh, oh, this one yeah. <laughs> nothing special <laughs> and uh, what do you think about the 3D printing technique I mean I know it's it's I'm still totally excited about it <laughs> But uh, I think it's the future. But is it good? I mean, you just print whatever you need and then just assemble it. It's one micron exact, so you don't have any problems with it. It's just like a snap fit, like that, and that's it. You, you <laughs> and think? what is about new kits uh, from Trumpeter or Hobby Boss uh, instrument to scale? They are mostly about you know, click uh, and simple models yeah. so I don't think it's a large difference but, but I, yep, so I I don't see that just a printed kit but you can print a lot of details interesting so for example I, I bought for a printed pass for study store because uh, make itself it's uh, very time consuming so just mm -hmm. make it for a printer and just print it with details mm -hmm. And it's the same about buying uh, extra extra parts for models, for resin parts and something like that. <laughs> they just do, ex do, do doing same thing, just print it and cast it. Mm -hmm. So I don't see a little large difference between buying extra parts and make just 3D parts. <laughs> Says the man who is making his details for himself. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but uh, just some parts are easy to make your own and some parts some not so easy <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i know i know but just make the whole engine section from scratch is not uh, quite easy uh -huh. and make uh, some lifting hooks or just bend the wire and glue it with super glue it is quite simple <laughs> <laughs> and you don't need free printer for them that, that's true, that's true. So I mostly find uh, founding a short and more, most less time consuming way how to do it. Mm -hmm. so, so rather a 2018 3D printed kit than a 50 year old Airfix kit, yeah? 
Yes. <laughs> A few people wrote me that I should buy uh, some old kit and make it super detail and build a nice model, but I don't see why. <laughs> yeah, it's, it just makes no sense. And uh, yeah, um, because uh, I like painting, I don't like crafting models. <laughs> if, uh, there, there are some old models from Airfix or Revel or something, and uh, everybody says that okay for the beginner it's good. No, for the beginner, let's go for new trumpeter, new uh, Edward, and th that's good for the beginners because then they have the feeling of success. With a 50-year-old yes. airfix exactly. kit, you you won't have the. We take the same discussion in, in Czech Republic <laughs> in, in our competition. So don't don't worry, it's a good one. <laughs> Maybe it's better to get out here because I will okay. sneeze the car. So. Let's go. Let's go.